Hi, everyone, and welcome back to our webinar Wednesday. It looks a little bit different than we usually do, obviously, as you can tell, but we are so excited to be joining you today with our Meet UA series. We're excited to be back. As a reminder, I am Allison Beasley. I'm our coordinator of parent and family programs here at the university, and we are so excited to be joined by Dr. Matt McClendon, who is our associate vice president and executive director for enrollment management here at the university. He is still pretty new to the university. We have managed not to scare him off yet. But we're so <laughs> excited to have him here with us and for him to tell him a little bit more, tell y'all a little bit more about himself and for y'all to get to know him a little bit more. So thank you, Dr. Okay. McClendon, for joining us. Thank you. Glad to be here. So I'll start off easy. Tell okay. us about yourself and what led you here to UA. Okay. Uh, that's, that's a pretty easy question. So I've been... Uh, connected to or in higher ed for most of my career. So uh, I actually, when I first started my career, I started out in financial services. So my first job out of college, I always like telling the story, was that I was a stockbroker and I had to go door to door uh, selling investments. And so I did not last very long in that job. That was my first job. And uh, I decided that I needed to find a better career, more suited for me. And so I decided to, after I got out of uh, doing my master's degree, went back into higher ed, worked for a uh, marketing higher ed research firm for about five or six years out in Kansas City. And then prior to coming to UA, I was at Georgia Tech. Georgia Institute of Technology for uh, 10 years. And I did a variety of different roles there. I was director of communications. And then my role before coming to UA was director of strategy and planning. So for enrollment management. So uh, kind of a jack of all trades within uh, enrollment management and have been here at UA for uh, about five months. Uh, started in November of this past year of 2019. And uh, so far so good. I think what led me to the job was it was just a real unique opportunity and kind of the right time to move into uh, this role, the associate vice president role in, in my career. Uh, there had been a lot about UA admissions that was sort of well known in the industry, especially the uh, team of regional recruiters that are out there uh, recruiting throughout the country. And it really appealed to me that UA takes enrollment management very seriously. And it is uh, just a really important part of what goes on here at the university and it's the university of Alabama. There's a lot of pride and it's just, uh, it's, it's a cool place to be. I'm a little biased as well because I spent three years working in admissions before I got my current role. And so I, really that's right. We talked about that. Yeah. I yeah. Love my so, with admissions. Yeah. And Many great careers were started in admissions. So some just, some of us just happen to stay there. So you know, <laughs> move on. So. Uh, okay. So you mentioned you've been here for about five months. So tell yep. us, what is your favorite thing about UA and living in Tuscaloosa? Well, I came from really right downtown Atlanta. We lived in Midtown Atlanta, uh, my wife and I, and so we enjoyed living there. It was a good place to live, but it could be very hectic and chaotic and the traffic. And uh, so one of the things I really like about Tuscaloosa is that I can go to the grocery store, the drugstore, Home Depot and Target all within an hour and get home and that just is a new experience for us. Um, I would say probably about the university, the thing that I, I really enjoy the most is the pride that people feel. Uh, there is just something unique and, uh, and almost uh, addicting in a way of saying roll tide. Uh, it just kind of gets you uh, uh, right in the heart in a good way. And also the fact that um, as I said, there, the place is really, this place is really committed to enrollment management. Uh, recruiting is just in its DNA. It's hard to describe if, if you've not worked here before. And that's not to say other universities don't think that re recruitment is important or admissions is important, but really from the president on down, there's just a culture of if somebody's here visiting on campus and they need help and they're a prospective student, uh, whoever it is, is going to help them. And so that's, that's just really unique among uh, colleges and universities. And so that's been very, very beneficial for me. We love that. Yeah. Okay. So what's the most surprising thing that you've learned so far about UA? Surprising thing. Um, hmm, that's a good question. I think that, um, I don't know if I ever really, uh, understood fully what it was like in terms of the football games. 
So <laughs> that was, I went to, I've been to two Alabama football games. And obviously at my prior institution, we had football and, you know, good tradition there. But the, you. what's that? We won't hold it against you. Hold it against me. But uh, it's just a new level here. And uh, I remember with my wife and I, we went to, uh, it was a game right where I believe it was the Arkansas game this year. And we were kind of walking around the tailgate and we both were just kind of, wow, this is, they, they really are taking it seriously here. And it's really a big thing. And so that was uh, just the, the traditions here, I think have been the other. And the fact that a lot of people all throughout the country are really proud of their alma mater. I mean, if you think about the alumni involvement that we have, it's amazing. I mean, you really can't go too many places in the United States without somebody being familiar with the University of Alabama. And, and obviously apart for our sports traditions, but also just our alumni base and the amazing things that they're doing. And I just think that that's really amazing that from Chicago to Texas, to California, to New York, all over the country, you have people from the University of Alabama anywhere you go. So. We certainly love our Bama family, and we know that there are Bama families all over the university, the nation, the world. We love it. Yes, yes, uh, very much so. Okay, so what is your favorite thing about working in the admissions world and recruiting students? I think probably one of my favorite things about it is, it's a little bit cliche, but you, you, you get to see students at this really cool time of life. Now, I know I do want to make uh, reference to the fact that it is often a very stressful time of life. It's especially stressful now dealing with the issues, you know, current events that we're dealing with now. So I don't want to mitigate that in any way. But we all remember what it was like in that April, May time frame when you're about ready to take that journey towards uh, uh, going off to college and kind of the summer before and the excitement and getting ready. And the fact that we sort of get to relive that with the prospective students every year, um, there's always challenges, there's always hiccups and hangups, but to kind of see the families coming on campus and you know that they're in this very cool, sometimes very emotional, uh, all of these different feelings kind of wrapped up into one. And we get to see that kind of year in and year out. And to me, that's always fun when you see the families and they're experiencing this thing that we've been doing for a long time for the first time. I would say the other thing about being in enrollment management is it allows me to be a part of so many different conversations. And so on the one hand, we're working with deans to help recruit students. We're working with strategic communications. We're working with you and, and your program. And so we get to kind of live all throughout the university. And, and that's just not something that every department um, has the advantage of. And so that's the other part that fun, is fun for me is one minute you're doing something completely different than the next. And so it, it, it doesn't get boring. <laughs> I like that perspective. That's really cool. Yeah. Fun. Them. My favorite thing was when families would ask me uh, what year I was, and so it always made me feel very young when I worked in admissions. So. I've, I've had a couple of those. We had a counselor briefing not too long ago, and, and counselor looked at me and said, well, how long have you been here, and you know, in which territory do you recruit for? And I kind of said, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm sort of over the whole thing, <laughs> so, but I do have a little bit of a baby face, so I, I, I will take it, take it with a grain of salt. Love that. Okay, yeah. so you mentioned that this was particularly a stressful time, especially what's going on yep. in the world. What advice do you have for families who are either in the college search process right now, as you said, that April, May timeframe, um, or even if their student is already here at UA, what advice do you have for families? So I would say the first one is I think families need to acknowledge that it's a stressful time even regardless of what's going on currently. So I think families need to find time to communicate and sit down with one another. Uh, a colleague of mine at my previous institution, he always recommended that you set aside a time of the week, Sunday afternoons, Monday nights, where you're going to talk about college. And that way it's not being brought up um, uh, over and over again by parents, but also it, for the parents, it allows the students to know that there's going to be a dedicated time to talk about that. And especially now, I think families have got to be honest with one another about 
what really they think is, is going to be the future. We want to make sure that we give everybody as much information as we can, that every decision we make, we're sending it out as soon as the decision is made and we're being as transparent as we can. And I would really advocate for families that that transparency is the same in their, in their household, that they're trying to be honest about what they think uh, they can afford at this point, what they think is going to be the right choice given the circumstances, and that really every voice kind of around the table is heard. Uh, for students and families in particular, I think it's important for the schools that you're looking at to know what they have done with their uh, May 1st deadline. Uh, we have extended our deadline to June 1st. So students have up until June 1 to pay their freshman enrollment deposit. They also have until June 1 to uh, accept their scholarship offer. So we decided to extend that. I think they need to regularly be reviewing the schools that they're interested in's website because they many of them now have FAQ pages related to uh, what's going on with, with the outbreak and, and what changes are happening in their schools. Um, and lastly, I think uh, for many students who maybe have not had the chance to visit here, we have all kinds of different resources for you to see what the campus looks like. It really breaks my heart, I'm being honest, that we cannot have students come here to campus. I was walking around campus the other day, uh, about a week ago, uh, and it was just gorgeous, and there was nobody who could be there to experience it. And, th and that, for me, has been tough, and I also know for many of our students that they're missing things that are important in their lives, proms, graduations, et cetera. But there's still ways to experience the campus through our virtual tour and also the ability to reach out and have a conversation with one of our capstone men and women, as well as uh, their individual recruiter. They can set up a time to talk with them. So there's ways to see it. And hopefully uh, at some point soon, my fingers are crossed, we can begin to have visitors back. I'm not sure when that will be, but as soon as we know that it's safe to bring people back, uh, we're going to invite as many people who has come because we the campus is I think one of our best selling points and uh, I hope to have students back here soon. I so. absolutely agree with that. It is very quiet around Tuscaloosa and it is yeah. just a weird time without students. Just not the same. It's just not the same. So. Thank you for tuning into this. We miss you and we can't wait to see you back soon. Yes, please. We can't. We very much miss you. <laughs> I can say I live in downtown Tuscaloosa. I live. Uh, about a mile from campus on University Boulevard. And uh, it's, it's a little eerie and a little quiet and it's just not the same. So as soon as we can get the students back, I think we'll all be happier. Yeah, so. I agree. Yeah. And maybe families, you're ready to have them out of your house. We will happily take them back. Yeah. <laughs> I know for some, yes, it's ready to get a little space. So. <laughs> uh, okay, so what is something, Dr. McClendon, that people would not guess about you? What's like a hidden talent or a hidden fact? Uh, I am a huge music fan. I uh, love, uh, I do not have a vinyl collection uh, just because uh, I, I don't necessarily want to store it or carry it. But I'm, I'm a huge fan of uh, uh, music, vinyl music, classic rock, uh, all of the different genres. And so, uh, and I also play a little guitar. My friends joke that I am the, they call me the, the three chord king. I can pretty much play any song as long as it has only three chords and a pretty simple melody to sing. Uh, but I can play uh, a pretty decent Sweet Home Alabama uh, through all of it. I can't do the fancy licks. That's not, uh, I can't do that. I would need some help there, but I can get through the whole song. So maybe at some point, if you have me back, I can bring my guitar and, and play a couple tunes and that might be the end of the podcast, <laughs> but we can, we can do that if, if you would like, so. We could get some of our school of music students to help you out. Like, yeah, I, think, I need a little backup. So yeah. a little backup, but yeah, that's that's my secret talent is is a slight bit of musical ability. So okay, so yeah. this is a off the cuff question. What uh -huh. is the best concert that you've ever been to? You're a big music fan. What's the best concert? Oh gosh, that is a really really good question. Um, I would say probably the, the one that was most memorable for me and the one where I was just completely just uh, blown away was there was a tour that Eric Clapton did in the late nineties and he called it his nothing but blues tour. And he had an album called from the cradle. 
believe that was the album name. And it was nothing but blues tunes that he had done. And uh, it was just a really phenomenal way to see, you know, one of the greatest guitar players in the history of rock and roll play a lot of tunes that influenced him to write the music that he did. And it was, I was maybe 16 or 17 at the time. And so I got to see just a really cool concert that uh, I don't know if I fully appreciate it at the moment, but uh, the nothing but blues tour. So that, that, that was one that sticks out of my mind from, uh, from that. But I think uh, for live music, it's uh, there's been just as many fun concerts that have been at an outdoor venue with a small band that's up and coming. And when you go and see them, you know, support live music, they just uh, enjoy it. So, but, uh, but the, the one with Clapton when I was a kid was a good one. That's a, that's a great answer. Yeah. So. That's a really great answer. Yeah. Uh, any other fun facts that you might want to share with any folks? No, I do want to just, uh, I, I'm sure I probably could, but I do really want to make sure that I give a shout out to the team and enrollment management. Um, I, I, I really would be remiss if I didn't say something about the hard work that they're doing. I know the current events have really turned a lot of things upside down for a lot of people. And it, there's a lot of people who are really facing some tough challenges, but the way that the team has come together, the way that they have really within about a week's time put up virtual events, the phone calls that they are making, the working from home, this is virtual is just not how college admissions works. No. It's not what we like to be. We like to be with people and we like to have events and the fact that each of the team that I uh, fortunate enough to work with they're just really doing a lot of work behind the scenes to to try to make the best of, of the situation they're in so really a shout out to my my department so, and a thank you oh that we love that yeah so we yeah. always love our enrollment management staff uh, I get to work on the orientation side of thing with parent and family orientation and so I know yes. how that team has been working and Right. Trying to figure out what everything looks like. And while we don't have answers yet, we are actively exploring what things look like and keeping our fingers crossed for everybody to just stay healthy. Yep. And, um, yep. Yeah. Stay healthy and uh, social distance and all the things that you hear that that's really important. So we can kind of get back to normal, hopefully, hopefully soon. So, but the admissions office is here. Uh, the best way to kind of reach out to us is gobama.ua.edu. Uh, and that's really the best conduit to get to our contact information along with our virtual information sessions, our tide chats, uh, along with reaching out to current students. We've set up some chats, some virtual chats with some of our capstone men and women as well. So uh, we are open, uh, at least in the virtual sense, and ready to answer questions and talk with students and uh, uh, give them all the information to uh, show them why we think we're the best choice. Awesome. We love that. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention, for those still looking at different institutions, be sure to check out social media for the University of Alabama, uh, UA yes. slash social. We'll give mm -hmm. you all of the university's official social media accounts and know that the University of Alabama Undergraduate Admissions has a really active Facebook page, letting you know what's going on, showing off some of those virtual tour aspects that are very, very cool. So we invite you to follow that as well as UA Parent and Family Programs on Facebook and at Bama Parents on Twitter. We share the university's messages. We share some fun content. Sometimes I share bad jokes on there. I like <laughs> to think I'm funny. Yeah. Not always, but please go follow on social media so that you can stay most up to date with what's going on in the university's world as we strive to keep you as updated as we know information. But I just want to thank you, Dr. McClendon, for taking time. Thank out you schedule working from home yeah. to hang out with us today and anything else that you got no uh roll tide roll tide indeed thanks all for joining us if you have any questions reach out to gobama.ua.edu or parents.ua.edu thanks and roll tide <laughs>